guys will here uh, with Jurassic Elements. We're back in my house now. Um, currently I'm holding a Hypo Burmese Python. It is a female named Athena. She is het for granite and albino. Um, we just did some cleaning on the six foot rack system I'm gonna show you guys. So uh, as we put the snakes back, I'm gonna explain what I'm holding and we'll go from there. So this is Athena, the Hypo, het albino, het granite. She stays on the top of this rack. This is a Freedom Breeder rack. Uh, it's six foot by, I think, 30 inches wide at about a foot tall. So yeah, just redid her kit. The male will be a granite het albino that um, I'll uh, be putting her with. So basically hypo, 50% uh, of the clutch will be hypo for something. So hypo granite, hypo albino, which is called pearls, um, as well as hitting all three, which is a hypo granite. Um, albino, so we call those pearl granites. Uh, but yeah, so that's Athena. Alright guys, I'm here with Judy. This is our albino. We thought she was het for granite when we got her, which was just about two years ago. She's four years old. She produced babies for us this year. Uh, the father was a granite Burmese python, um, and so it didn't get proven out, but the albino did, which was the het albino for the male, which I'll show you later in the video. She is about 10 foot maybe a good 40 50 pounds maybe a little heavier um but yeah this is judy we're gonna be putting her back in her cage everything's clean she's a big girl um she did produce babies for us last year i'm going to show you those real quick they're just in the rack next to her so we produced normals and we produced albinos <laughs> And we haven't put the waters back in as we just clean them because they normally typically, typically knock them over the minute um, that we uh, clean their cages. But that's one of the albinos, about a month old. And then I'll show you one of the normals. And this is one of the normals. Super cool pattern. So they're 50% het for granite, 100% uh, het for albino for the normals. So this is the wild type. All right guys, so this is our granite Burmese python. This is our male. So he's the one that um, produced with that albino Judy. Uh, he's a granite, which was possible het albino, which proved out to be het albino as the babies came out with some of them being albino. He's awesome. Um, he just went through a shed, so he's got a little bit stuck on him. We're probably gonna let him soak after we're done with this video. But yeah, he's a cool guy. His name's Apophis. So this is our male granite Burmese python. Okay guys, so this is our pearl granite Burmese python. So she has three genes visually shown. She's got a little dust bunny on her face actually. She was uh, sitting on the couch. So I'm gonna get that off her before I set her in. But yeah, so she is a hypo albino granite Burmese python female that we're raising up. She's two years old, probably about six and a half feet and just a couple pounds. So she's got about two more years before breeding, but that's quite all right. She's gorgeous. Probably easier to tell in the light here as of course she has a little bit of dirt on her, but yeah, she is awesome. Has a nice pink head to her. She's great. Let's see if I can get that dust bunny off. And there we go. All right guys, this isn't a Burmese python. This is a carpet python. Uh, she's a female. She did produce for us. So I'll show you the babies that I have. They just hatched out about this month. She is a little nippy, a little flighty. She's about seven and a half foot, but she is gorgeous. And she is a coastal jungle of some sort. So as you watch me struggle handling her, she's awesome. I'm going to put her back. Now I'll show you her babies. Now her babies are very small. They're taking pinkies at the moment. If I can find one. There we go. And these are her babies. They are better in the light. Super cool. Excuse my shaking. 
But yeah, they are awesome. They're gonna be nice and big animals. The male uh, came from a buddy of mine and it is uh, a big male. So these, these snakes will be nice and big, these carpets. So yeah, that's the carpet babies. All right, guys, so this is one of my rhino rat snake proven breeder females, one of the ones that started it all here at Jurassic Elements. Um, it's probably hard to tell. She's pretty wiggly. I got gloves on right now. She's real bitey, which is totally fine. I'm respectful of that. But while I'm talking, I just don't want to get bit up a bunch. Uh, but yeah, she's got a lot of teals, a lot of blues, a lot of greens in her. She obviously has a horn, and that's why they call them rhino rat snakes. Um, super sought after species. Uh, we have five rhino uh, rat snake adults um, and this so far is the only proven breeder we have some eggs in the incubator actually from her uh, she's produced for me for two years now and last year I had a set of twins so that was super cool um, these guys are mainly found in Vietnam and yeah they use their horn some say to lure uh, prey like birds or fish at the water um, and Others say different, but that's the only real reason as to why we think that they have this horn on their face. But yeah, she is gorgeous. She has some awesome colors. All right, so now we're here with one of the California king snakes that we're raising up. This is a female. She's got a lot of dark colors in her. It's super cool, this pattern. And it's mainly variable. There really isn't much genetically going on with these uh, type of this species of snake. So. Uh, all her babies will have a s slightly mutated patterning of exactly what she has. Um, and the male can also determine the patterning of these guys. Uh, they are awesome. Obviously, when anything has a king in front of it, when it comes to snakes, that means they eat other snakes. Uh, and these are found in the United States and will hunt, if needed, other species of snakes. And sometimes they're cannibalistic. But yeah, this is the female we're raising up. She is about a year old. Super cool. All right, back again with another uh, snake species that we keep here. This is a raise up. This is a scaleless corn snake. So the, basically at the top of its body, it doesn't have any scales. And then below you can see just belly scales, which is actually good because as they're moving across surfaces, you don't want them scraping up their soft skin. Uh, so to see belly scales on this animal um, is good, even though that they're scaleless. And so this is just a genetic thing that you can produce um, and these snakes, these corn snakes, get about four foot at max and about an inch wide. Super cool species. The reason why they're called corn snakes is because um, back in the day when, probably in the 17, 1800s, people would find these corn snakes in their cornfields and they'd have a lump in their stomach. And so people thought that that meant that they've been, these snakes were eating their corn and so people were killing them. In reality, they were eating the rodents that were there um, trying to eat the corn. So once they realized that they were eating rodents, they stopped uh, killing them and left them alone. But it also, um, one of the reasons why they're also called corn snakes is because of the belly scales. It looks like corn kernels. So you can see him. This is the male. You can see him better in the light. But yeah, super cool species that we're raising up. All right, if she allows me to film her, um, she's a pretty squirrely corn snake. This is a ghost motley um, corn snake. It's an adult female, proven breeder. We actually have <laughs> eggs in the incubator. She is squirrely right now. She's in blue. Uh, she just laid a second clutch. So sometimes with colubrids, especially corn snakes, they can lay a second clutch of eggs if paired back up with the male and fed a bunch of times. And that's exactly what she did. So she's going to go through the shed and then I'll start feeding her again before bermation. But yeah, she's an awesome little snake. Uh, she has laid successfully 24 eggs and that is a lot for a corn snake so i'm really happy with her for the first time me having her first time her breeding actually uh, she is three years old yeah that's the ghost motley corn snake all right so this is our 44 quart rack system uh, that's hooked up to heat pads and in here we have a breeding pair of woma pythons proven we have a raise up female and then i have a green Burmese Python Het for Caramel that is also in here. So this is the raise up female that we have. This is a Woma Python. This species is from Australia. Um, for those that don't know, what's really cool about this is since this species is from Australia, um, fun fact basically, uh, Australia closed those borders 
um, to import and export on reptiles about 20 years ago. So what we have here in the United States is all we have when it comes to breeding and keeping a stock of them. So it's a really cool species to work with considering that if, you know, worst comes, a bunch of them die, like whatever we have here is what we have. We cannot get any more out of Australia, no matter how abundant they are. Uh, but they're, they're awesome. They're a very cool species. They also change a little bit in color as they get uh, warmer. Uh, they'll get more yellow and orange. Uh, this one just ate a meal for me. You might be able to tell that there's a little rodent there. So I'm handling with care and with caution. But yeah, super cool. Little nippy. So I'm wearing the gloves again just because while I'm talking, I don't need to be getting bit up. But yeah, beautiful species. All right. And so this is the breeder male Wilma python. They get between four and five foot. They're, they're a decent sized python, but not as big as what boas get. Definitely not as big as Burmese pythons, but they're sizable. Um, very stunning. And yeah, so this male is proven uh, super cool. Once again, they can be bitey. This guy's actually pretty calm right now, which is awesome. And yeah, that's the male Wilma breeder. All right, so this is the green Burmese python I was talking about. So this guy is a about two years old, uh, slow grower, just because we're waiting to find a good, decent female. But he is a patternless, or what they call green Burmese python, that is het, or what they say is heterozygous for caramel, which is a form of albinism that doesn't have uh, teresine in it. So there's T positive and T negative albino. So he's het for the T negative albino. And his name, we call him Stillgard, and that is from, he is a book character turned movie. Uh, so yeah, that's him. Thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you're interested in any of our Burmese or Carpet Python 2022 babies, DM me on Facebook or Instagram at Jurassic underscore Elements. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.